Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today we are going to be discussing GPS. I want to do a full GPS tutorial for the built-in flight simulator GPS, that is the default GPS. At the end we will discuss other GPS units found in add-on airplanes, as well as some payware GPSs that can be going in any airplane that I highly recommend over the default ones. I want to state that right now, I do highly recommend a third-party add-on GPS over the defaults. Nonetheless, the defaults are a good way to get you up to speed on how the GPS works and how to use it. And I do recommend using the G default GPS for a while before investing in a actual payware realistic GPS. And we'll discuss, you'll probably figure that out why because as we go. But uh, let's discuss in this first video what exactly the GPS is and how it works. So ignoring the obvious, what a GPS does is tell you your position on the globe. That is the main purpose of a GPS. Aviation GPSs, however, do a lot more. Let's go over a list of pretty much everything the default GPS is capable of doing. Actually, you know what? Let's go over what actual GPS units in aviation can do. So what can the GPSs do? Well, they can determine your location. They can navigate to a destination either directly or along a route. They show you a graphical depiction of terrain. Information on airports, nav aids, waypoints, and even airspace. Locate nearest airport, nav aid, waypoint, and navigate to it. You can fly instrument approaches. It will make you aware of nearby airspace boundaries. It can show traffic in the area and it can follow a lateral and vertical flight profile. Now these next items are in red because they are things that the default GPS can't do, but real GPSs can. I.e. they can show terrain warnings, show weather, fly SIDs or stars, change flight plan on the spot, allow programming of custom waypoints, they can show you nearby obstacles, and they feature an updatable navigation database. Notice that lateral vertical profile and navigation database has asterisks next to it. In the case of the lateral and vertical profile, I do want to mention the default GPS does have a rudimentary VNAV built into it. And even though it's not technically updatable, the default GPS, you can easily update instrument approach procedures as well as terminal waypoints and it is possible to update other things in the navigation database although it is very very difficult and can lead to problems so normally it's only recommended to worry about the IAPs anyway so here we have a picture of the globe this is not to exact size so let's say this triangle here was our position let's see just exactly how the GPS works the GPS system consists of 28 satellites in orbit around the planet. These satellites have been positioned in orbit so that at least four of them can communicate with a GPS unit anywhere on the globe. You need four in order to determine your position. These satellites communicate with your GPS unit by sending data to it. This data most notably includes its position in the orbit as well as the current time that the satellite has. From this your uh, GPS unit knows its time and it will compare how long it took the signal to go from the satellite to the unit and from that it can determine the satellite's direction and distance from the unit. And using that information, when you add in two additional satellites, it can then triangulate its position and determine its exact location on the globe. Now, note only three satellites are required here. Why did I say four earlier? Well, that's because a fourth satellite is included as required for redundancy. Although only three are required to know the position, the fourth one is there as a backup. So, satellites are used to determine your current position on the globe. When your unit has included a map program, that position is then overlaid on top of the map. When you enter in route information, all this information is brought together on your screen to show you how to get from your current position to where you're wanting to go. 
It should be noted that the GPS contains the exact position and other relevant information for every VOR, NDB, RNAV waypoint, and intersection in the world. In addition to this, it also has info on every airway, every SID, every star, and every instrument approach. However, only the waypoints and instrument approaches are in the default Flight Simulator GPS, unfortunately. SIDs and STARS are not included. Flight Sim includes two GPSs by default, the GPS 500 from Garmin and the GPS 295 also from Garmin. One is designed to be a inbuilt panel GPS that can communicate directly with the avionics of the aircraft. The other is a handheld GPS which cannot be used for navigation alone like the panel, the inbuilt panel one. It is there to supplement your regular navigation from VORs, NDBs, or looking out the window. It's very useful, but it doesn't replace these things. For the sake of our tutorial, we're going to be focusing on the GPS 500 mostly. These skills, however, can translate to the GPS 295. It's just the button pushes will be a little bit different. Also, one other thing. These GPS units have currently been discontinued by Garmin. The GPS 500 has since been replaced by the GNS 530, which is in the process of being replaced by the GTX 750. And same with the GPS 295. It was replaced by the GPS 296. So, yep, they're a bit out. I want to talk real quick about integrated flight systems, i.e. G1000 or similar avionics. These things are driven a lot by the GPS, although they do, do include things like VORs and NDBs. They have a lot of other features that are driven by the GPS. These GPS units are capable of a lot. We'll, we'll get into these in the last video more than any other video, but just m note that G these um, integrated flight systems, while very, very pretty, they are driven almost entirely by GPS in a way, so they do require a little bit of trust in the technology. Your big airliners also have GPS. In the case of these airliners, however, the GPS is simply relaying position info to the INS as well as to the flight navigation system, which then displays that position on a map. It's not 100% like the GPS is found in, in uh, general aviation aircraft. 